Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about continuity of the function. First of all, we are talking about real functions, which means their argument is real um, and their value are real. And this is basically within the framework of function limits, which is in turn part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and uh, high school students presented on unizor.com. Yeah, I suggest you to watch this lecture from this particular website because it has explanation and you can read it as a textbook. So, talking about continuity. Well, first of all, let's think about what is your intuitive understanding of what a continuous function is supposed to be. Well, it looks like the graph of such a function should be smooth, right? Which means you're just continually drawing the graph of this function without lifting your pen. Well, it can be something like this. This is also continuous. Um, but this is not. Because you have to lift the pen, put it in another point, and then continue graphing um, the function. So our intuitive understanding of continuity is basically drawing the graph of the function without lifting your pen from the from the paper or marker from the from the whiteboard. All right. So let's try to explain this in uh, more mathematical terms. First of all, let's talk about domain of these functions. Well, if I want to draw the graph without lifting my pen or a marker, whatever, it means that it's supposed to be defined on a contiguous um, area, contiguous interval on the x axis, right? Otherwise, I will have to lift my... If, if it's defined here and then here, then I have to draw the graph here, then lift my pen and start drawing there. So if I don't lift my pen, it means my um, area where the function is defined, the domain of the function, is a contiguous area. It can be um, finite, which means like from here to here, or it can be infinite, from here to plus infinity, or from here to minus infinity, or from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, finite or infinite domain is the first requirement uh, of this function. All right, now, we finally have agreed that the domain is supposed to be a contiguous area on the x-axis. Now, how can I express mathematically, more rigorously, um, that the graph of the function is supposed to be drawn without lifting my pen? Well, as I approach any point on my uh, graph, the next point is supposed to be exactly where my old points start, right? which means basically that um, if I take if I take two points x1 and x2 and these are correspondingly f at x1 and f at x2 if my x1 and x2 are coming closer and closer then my functions, my these points, also supposed to come closer and closer. So as I'm um, uh, decreasing the distance between these, the distance between these two also is supposed to be um, getting closer and closer. So if my x1 minus x2 goes to zero, which is an infinitesimal value, from this should follow that my difference between these two also is supposed to be infinitesimal. And what's also important, it should be actually for any position of my two points, x1 and x2, which I'm going to express slightly differently, but which means exactly the same thing. I will do the following. 
I'm saying that for any point R, which is a real number, which belongs to domain, which means that the function is defined, I can take x which tends to this r in any way and it might it might be expressed as this so that's what I'm going to do so I'm fixing one point but basically it can be any point so as soon as I fix this point r then I can say that no matter how my x within the domain is approaching r my function of x should should approach function of r so first of all it's defined at r because r belongs to domain and the value is exactly the limit of the value of f at x i will give you a couple of examples when it's not true but my continuous function should actually have this particular property and finally let me express it in epsilon delta language which is kind of customary for um, all these limit function limit kind of things what does it mean well it basically means that for any r, uh, r which belongs to domain and for any epsilon which is a positive number however small which basically dictates how close to each other will be the value of the function of point x and the value at point r there exists such delta so that if my x minus r less than or equal to delta then my f at x minus f at r by absolute value would be less than or equal to epsilon so that's what basically this mean on epsilon delta language so for any fixed r from domain and for any epsilon neighborhood around this um, for any uh, I'm sorry for any uh, fixed r and for any uh, value of the function my epsilon na neighborhood would, would, would be here from this function f at r up and down there is always a delta neighborhood of r so whenever my x within this delta neighborhood my function values would be within epsilon so that's what actually mean in mathematical terms that you can draw the graph without lifting your hand I quite frankly this is nice and looking very impressively mathematically I kind of prefer this type of uh, notation from this follows this where r is any and this is just basically an explanation what this arrow means epsilon delta that's what it is so this is basically the definition of um, continuous function now the function which usually um, students deal in, in school and universities maybe they're mostly continuous there are I mean there are some examples I mean I will explain a couple of I, I will give you a couple of examples which which is not uh, which is not the case but generally speaking what people are dealing with in mathematics and in mathematical applications usually the functions are continuous but anyway obviously there are some exceptions and what I'm going to do right now is just I'll give you a couple of examples of continuous and non-continuous functions so you basically have a feeling of how to prove the continuity of the function okay my first example is function f at x equals to x cubed well the graph of this function as you know it's something like this obviously continuous right so how can I prove that this is a continuous function well let's just use my 
epsilon delta definition. Choose any point R and any degree of closeness epsilon positive which I would like to have between the value of the function at point R and value of the function at point X so that's supposed to be less than or equal to epsilon I have to find delta such that if my X minus R less than delta then then this would follow that's what I have to do I have to find delta so based on R and epsilon I have to find delta so that this is from this follows this okay let's just find it I mean how can I prove that this is continuous function well I choose any R and any epsilon and they'll just come up with exact value of delta which basically cause from this uh, inequality to be this one to be to, to be true all right so f at, uh, x minus f at r it's what it's x cube minus r cube right by absolute, by, by, by absolute value now x cube minus r cube is basically we all know this again if you don't believe just multiply it but we did it many times now and that means absolute value of the product is the product of F, uh, absolute value less than or equal to now this is sum of certain um, numbers now some of them may be positive now this is positive this is positive rx may be not but if I will uh, replace it with individual absolute value I will only increase right the sum this is greater or equal to this if r and x are positive then there is an equality if r and x are negative it's also equality because this is positive and this is the same as this one but if r and x are of different signs then this is definitely greater than this so that's true now here is what I'm suggesting to do let's choose delta 1 something close to R let's say equals to R why do they choose it because I would like this thing to be bounded from above not ex not exceeding certain value because this is obviously going to zero right so I would like to exploit this but I would like this to be relatively uh, bounded um, because if this is an infinitesimal and this is bounded value then their multiplication will be infinitesimal right so if I choose let's say delta 1 equals to R what does it mean from this now this is what what does it mean it means that X is in delta neighborhood of R so if this is R and this is R minus delta and R plus delta now if my delta 1 is equal to R so it's from R minus R to R plus R so I definitely know that I am less than 2R by absolute value at least right so my X by absolute value would be less than or equal to 2r from this right if my x minus r less than delta 1 then I know this so let's choose it this way then I know that this is 
x minus delta times now x square would be 4 r square plus 2 r square plus 1 r square so it's 7 r square I don't really need absolute value because this is square now what I will do is I will choose delta 2 which is equal to epsilon divided by 7 r square now then their multiplication if my x minus minus r I'm sorry if my x minus r is less than delta 2 which is equal to this then I definitely have this would be less than epsilon right that's what I need now what I'm going to do I'll choose the minimum between delta 1 and delta 2 then I know that both actually will be true this would be true and this would be true and that's why it's less than epsilon so I explicitly found it's a minimum between r and epsilon divided by 7 divided by r square this is exactly the delta which I'm looking for so for any r and epsilon I found exactly the delta which is needed delta is minimum of r comma epsilon divided by 7 r square that's it so I found and from this follows this which is this okay so I have proven that x cube is uh, a continuous function let's talk about something else let's have another function another example sinus sine of x okay again we know that the graph looks like this right which is a continuous function now we would like to prove it okay so let's first analyze what do we have to prove well again we choose r and choose epsilon now what we have to do we have to find such delta that this would be less than or equal to epsilon if x minus r delta okay so what is my delta let's just think about it well my analysis actually is to transform this into something more palatable now the difference between two signs well um, if you remember trigonometry what we can do in this particular case is the following we can have x is equal to x plus r divided by 2 and x minus r divided by 2 r is equal to x plus r divided by 2 minus r minus r divided by 2 right x would cancel and r would be r r2 and r2 this is x2 and x yes and now I will transform sine of x as sine of sum of these and sine of r as sine of uh, difference between two of these and you will see that the final formula will be well let me just uh, sine of sum is sine cosine cosine sine so um, sine uh, x plus r cosine x minus r plus cosine sine cosine x plus r 2 sine x minus r 2 now that's my sine of x now minus sine of r sine of this one which is sine x plus r 
cosine x minus r minus sine x minus uh, sorry sine cosine cosine x plus r minus sine x minus r now why did they do all this because of this and this is plus by the way because minus and minus you have to subtract this minus and this minus would be plus so the answer is 2 cosine x plus r 2 and sine x minus r 2 okay now why is it better for a very simple reason because now I can say that this thing is less than or equal to absolute value of this is a uh, product of uh, absolute value cosine is always from minus 1 to 1 so the cosine has absolute value of uh, maximum absolute value of uh, 1 so I can put 2 and then sine x minus r2 right so instead of cosine I took it maximum of its absolute value which is 1 now let's talk about this one sine phi less than phi how about this for uh, inequality and I think you should remember it from definition of the sine remember with unit circle if this is my angle phi in radians then the length of this is also phi because the circle has radius r right 2 pi r is the length of an entire circle r is equal to 1 so it's the length is 2 pi and the angle phi obviously is and and the total angle is 2 pi right so it's the length of 2 pi and the and the total angle is 2 pi so if the angle is phi then the length is, is phi in radians and what is the sine sine is this one this is sine of phi now the length of the, um, of the of the arc is greater than the perpendicular because the perpendicular is the shortest distance from the point to the line and this is not a perpendicular so it's always greater so phi is always greater than sine of, sin of phi so I can say in this particular case that this is less than 2 and instead of angle I will put sine of angle I put angle itself x minus r divided by 2 which is x minus r so as a result what I can say is the following I will just choose delta equals to epsilon and since I have this inequality this is less than delta therefore this would be less than epsilon that's how we have proven this and final example which I would like to present is a very simple example of a, of a function which does not have um, this property of continuity so I have to to express graphically I have to lift my pen so let me just show you how I can define this function so let's have a function which is always equal to zero except at one point here it has the value of one so f at x is equal to zero if x is not equal to zero and f at x is equal to one if x is equal to oops zero so my function is as follows 
I have a graph here but I do not go into this point zero I have to jump put a point here and then I start again and put it so I put uh, little errors here and that's how usually we uh, denote that there is no point in between and the point is somewhere else so this is a typical example of the non-continuous function how can I prove it well very simply remember we have two major requirements number one domain should be uh, contiguous now in this case domain is all all the real values from minus infinity to plus infinity so it is contiguous the first requirement is satisfied the second requirement is if x goes to r therefore f at x goes to f at r now let's take r is equal to zero so x goes to zero as x goes to zero my function at x should go to f of zero which is equal to one right but f at x as x getting closer and closer to point zero is always equal to zero you see so it's zero 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 and the limit of zeros is zero so this is actually it goes to zero not to one so that's basically the proof the second requirement of continuity is not satisfied we have a sequence which goes to a point point zero where the limit is not equal to the value of the function at this point by the way if you will take for instance any other point that would be a point of continuity so I have only one point where the function is not continu con con continu continuous just as a well mathematical joke if you wish um, I would like to, f to find the function which is not continuous at any point can that be done well apparently yes consider a function which is equal to zero if x is rational and e, uh, 1 if x is irrational so at any point wherever you are if you go by rational points if you approach to this point then you will have zeros and the limit will be zero if you approach by irrational points to the same point you will have one 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 and the limit will be one so basically there is no limit whenever you approach this point and any point there is actually no limit so we're not talking about function tending to any value at all which means at every point wherever you put whatever you put it's an, a, a point of non-continuously not not continuity non-continuity whatever it's a non-continuous point all right so uh, I suggested to read the notes for this lecture they're basically um, uh, expressing the same ideas and the same approach I did in the lecture they are on unizor.com um, and uh, well that's it thank you very much and good luck